Hey guys, what is up? And Shadowlands back for another review. Today I'm going to be doing a very much underrated assault rifle. Uh, very low rank too. Uh, GP, the K2. Pretty much every one of you should be able to try this weapon. It's pretty low rank and very, very cheap. Uh, only 800 GP a day and less than 4,000 for a week, so I'm pretty sure everyone should have a chance to try this weapon. It's very unique because it has all three modes of fire. It has a burst mode, three shot round. It has a single fire, which is also known as semi-automatic, and a fully automatic mode. I like all all of them very much, but I over, I pretty much overuse the fully automatic mode. That's the one that I use the most. I'm pretty sure most everyone's going to be relying on that. This gun is actually kind of unique. It's good for tapping and uh, ta and uh, spray. It's good for tapping and tapping. <laughs> no, it's good for tapping and spray fire. And longer ranges, the damage drop off isn't too bad, so that's actually not half bad. Going into the stats, we're looking at a damage of 40, a portability of 57, which is kind of low, a rate of fire of 74, which is kind of high, an accuracy of 85, which is relatively high as well, and a recoil of 66, which is just average. This is customizable uh, in the Gun Emporium. Damage will be boosted to 43, portability will stay the same at 57, a rate of fire will go from 74 to 77, accuracy would go from 85 to 88, and if you do that as well, the recoil will be boosted from 66 to 69. Now, 69 is kind of on the high side, and this recoil pattern isn't the smallest in the world. It's manageable, but it's kind of a little on the medium big side, so you may not want to boost that stat. In fact, I would highly recommend you don't. I would say the only guns you should ever boost the accuracy recoil stats on are uh, the ones that are meant to be used at longer ranges. Uh, the M14 is a good example of that now that I think about that. So I would suggest you do it for that gun. In fact, I recently released a uh, M14 SE and MK14 Mod Zero review. Uh, so maybe go back and watch those if you want a little more info on that. But we're looking at a standard ammo capacity of 30 of 90, and uh, it kind of runs out a little bit fast once you have that higher fire rate of 77, but, you know, sometimes you want to use this a little closer range. And if you tap fire, you can conserve your ammo pretty much uh, as you would want to. And I guess that's partially what the burst mode is for. Uh, I would suggest you abuse that to the best of your ability if you see necessary. Personally, if I were to say this is kind of like an M4A1 SOP mod without the silencer, I figure if you wanted to, you could easily put an S1 suppressor on this and uh, get away with it. It wouldn't really hurt the gun that bad. The performance wouldn't be that bad, considering that if you boost the damage to 43, you're not looking at that much of a damage loss. It's still going to be a solid three-shot, four-shot kill. Probably more often a four-shot at longer ranges than a three-shot, but three-shot does happen sometimes, especially on light vesters or if you hit them in the back in just the right spot. That happens too. I would say a suppressor wouldn't be a bad thing. I personally wouldn't put one on because I don't really feel like I need to, but... Uh, you know, it's never a bad idea. Now, personally, I would say an ACOG scope might fit better for this weapon, since I typically use this weapon a little bit longer range than closer range. Although with the high fire rate, it can easily be made into a close range weapon. 77 is quite high. That's M4A1 SOP mod if you customize it, so... And as you can see, I'm going to be getting a lot of headshots in this review. A couple of them are lottos, but a lot of them are also tap fires, and you'll see that the headshots uh, come with that higher accuracy of 85. I have not customized the recoil and accuracy in this review, so this is just as it comes. So please... Oh, wait. No, I take that back. No, I take that back. Yes, this is actually customized for accuracy and recoil, so you're seeing it with the higher recoil right now. Uh, my bad. I actually had this weapon for permanent. It was sold for uh, GP Perm for, I do believe, 70k a little while back. It was sold with the M4A1, I do believe, and I already had the M4A1, so I obviously didn't need to rebuy that. Uh, the ACR and the AK-47 have also gone on a couple of times, although I'm not sure which ones went on when. Uh, I just did my ACR Black Snake review, as you guys know, so if you want a little... Uh, ACR background, you can watch that. I talk a little bit more than just the regular gun, so. The spread recovery is quite fast in this weapon. I am surprised. Very fast spread recovery. And the spread doesn't get too big overall. It's completely manageable. It's just M416 size. It's not that bad. Maybe a little bit smaller, even. Um... It's just a good gun. It is vastly underrated. The only real downside of this weapon is the portability being only 57. Although, if you have a recon or light vest like me, then you're probably fine. You're seeing me using a recon vest right here, as well as a shotgun and a Patriot skull mask. So, if I were to say, in my honest opinion, if you use those kind of vests, even just a light vest alone would probably make that would probably be enough of a makeup to make this gun worth using. It's definitely not as heavy as a sniper rifle, and some people run with sniper rifles like I do occasionally, so it's definitely not out of the question. I don't see why you really wouldn't consider that. So that's just my own professional opinion, as professional as I can be at any rate. So if I were to give you my final opinion, I would say put on your damage uh, to 43, put on your rate of fire to 77, leave the accuracy alone. 85 accuracy is already quite high. That's just a little bit below the G36. So in my opinion, it's probably fine as is the recoil 
isn't worth losing the accuracy over. So that's just what I would say. Ooh, not shot. That looked like it really hurt. But anyway, um, <laughs> in real life, this is called the Daewoo K2. I'm not sure how you would pronounce this. D-A-E-W-O-O. Daewoo, Daewoo. Uh, so yeah, it's gas powered. I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly. Uh, let's see if there's anything else I could possibly mention. Uh, oh, yeah, customizable with a suppressor scope and magazine. I talked about the suppressor already. An S3, I guess, if you're going to be doing quarantine, just to keep the flash down. The recoil is less important there. Uh, you want to be tapping when you're doing quarantine anyway to conserve your ammo. But Magazine, uh, if you want to really go in for some heavy base rape and you don't want to use this as long range as I tend to use it, then maybe go ahead and go for the uh, S1 suppressor or uh, extended magazine 1. I'd say the uh, the S1 with the extended magazine one would probably be better if you're going to go in for that. Keep it quiet and low recoil, all that all that good stuff. So, also you guys are going to see I'm playing Slaughterhouse Elim. I didn't realize Slaughterhouse was on for Elim uh, until I did this review. I just saw a Slaughterhouse Elim game and I was like, is that a glitch or am I just seeing things? Walk into the game and I'm like, oh my god, this is the best thing I have ever played uh, next to Kill Creek. I still think Kill Creek is my favorite. Uh, so I will still be abusing that map quite a bit, but I do love this this. Slaughterhouse Elim, it's unique because the, because the two spawns are separated well enough, both sides have the capability to get base raped, but it's whichever one gets in the other one's face first that's going to get the base rape. So both sides have the capability to be base raped and to base raped, so it's an incredibly well... F I, I've always loved this map. I love doing it in uh, Clan Wars. A lot of people don't know this map because it was underplayed even when it was first released. It was played a lot for the event when it first came out, but it was underplayed in the long run, and I was really sad to see that, because I love this map, and it's so much fun to play. Same with Ghost Town here. I've been playing Ghost Town a little bit more often, although I've been trying to conserve that, because I've been doing so much Ghost Town gameplay. If I recorded everything I was possibly doing, that might be a bigger problem rather than not, so... Yeah. But on the bright side, this is a weapon that everyone can pretty much use. Just last minute note on the weapon. It's a weapon that anyone can use. I don't see why anyone wouldn't use it. It's definitely worth trying at least once, especially after you customize it, that damage and stuff. Keep in mind, this is with the higher recoil, so it'll be even lower recoil than you're seeing it here. This is on Bravo, so that just kind of speaks for itself. <sighs> That's about all the time I have for today, guys. Thank you for watching this review. Please rate, comment, subscribe. Check out some of my recommended channels. I do recommend them. Uh, there's a reason I have them on my recommended list. I highly suggest you watch a few if you are still bored, or you can obviously watch some more of my videos. <sighs> I love getting the views from you guys. If you guys have any recommendations, definitely let me know, and I will try to get those fulfilled out as fast as possible. I still have to do my squirt gun versus uh, alien gun review. Uh, that'll be done relatively soon. But other than that, thank you for watching. Please rate, comment, subscribe. I'll see you in the next review, guys. Shadowlands out.